um, me and my family are no longer welcomed at our local church. Um, and a little background information for you guys, you guys don't know me hopefully, uh, is that I'm a porn baby, actually. Yeah, I know, I thought it was kind of weird too. I didn't want to watch it at all, but uh, <laughs> my parents were always like, hey, kiddo, guess what? You're still a porn baby. Now he's always like, great, I have an iPhone 5 still, get to work, all right? That shit's embarrassing. Or uh, they'd be like, yeah, uh, born baby, how you doing? And I was like, not too good. That was the only thing dad ever came to of mine. <laughs> <laughs> but um, my favorite, though, is when um, I never believed him, because why the fuck would I? That's disgusting. I'm not from Alabama, you know. <laughs> but the longer, the longer I live with him, because I'm still a bum living with him, um, I noticed something, you know, and... That is the, they're kinky bastards. Like, not even lying. Like, I, this, this is how the story goes, okay? Um, I wake up, my boss texts me, she goes, you're cut from today's shift, we don't need you. Well, I mean, it was more like I got fired, but small <laughs> details. Um, but anyways, since I was uh, freshly unemployed, or entrepreneur, as I like to call it, um, I hit up my friends, you know, because all we do is smoke weed, and so I was really traumatized. I was like, <laughs> yeah, you know what we're doing after this. <laughs> Being good citizens, because that's illegal still, all right? Vote it in. Um, but anyways, but anyways, I was like, I'm fucking traumatized. I need to not be traumatized. Get me untraumatized. So then they're like, all right, I got the medicine for you. It's weed. Right? And then, uh, as I'm hanging out with them, I was, uh, I was telling them, or I was trying to tell them about this story. And, you know, they, they just didn't believe me. They're like, oh, it's one, of your, it's one of your stories again, you know, but, you know, they laughed along. They're good friends. But then, uh, we get to go bowling, because, you know, that's what stoners do in Farmington, is go bowl, because there's nothing else to do besides smoke weed and then bowl. Um, <laughs> But anyways, I, I see my pastor, and you know, before we got out of the car, I was talking to him, and he's like, oh, yeah, I just, you know, it was our annual uh, church night, bowling, uh, everybody's all here from the church, and I'm like, thanks, pastor friend, that's awesome, all right, I'm going to go bowl with my uh, church buddies, because that's something white to do on a Wednesday, <laughs> but uh, anyways, um, oh, shit. I'm supposed to go back. <laughs> Another key part to this story. Stay tuned. So, after I found out I got fired, um, I, I made a breakfast. A breakfast of champions. Stale Captain Crunch. Uh, cereal first, milk second. I'm not a psychopath. Uh, and then I was, I, was, I was starting to eat it. And then the doorbell rings. And I'm a Gen Z kid, so doorbells don't fucking ring. We just say here. Alright? So I was unfamiliar with that. So I was like... I'm gonna check that shit out. I go towards danger, I don't run from it. I got a mullet, I'm that ass, all right? <laughs> what you think? Yeah! No, but, but then um, I looked and there's this giant ass package on my doorstep and I'm like, what the fuck? There's no delivery truck or delivery driver. I thought I was supposed to sign for this shit. And I'm excited because my birthday's coming up and I'm like, what if it's that phone? What if my parents committed to making another video to give me another phone? That's not embarrassing. <laughs> so then, I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to be a douchebag. I'm not going to. I'm not going to open up their package. That's disrespectful. That's a douchey thing to do. But then, uh, two minutes later, I'm like, you know what? I'm a douche. Let's open it. So then, uh, I grab the package, put it on the table, and it looks like no one gave a shit about this package. It was poorly wrapped. You know, it, it, I could have done better on Christmas, you know. But, anyways, I'm opening it, and then uh, something gets to me. It's like, what if this package is super fucked up? And I was like, you know what? Let's do it anyways. Let's fucking do it. <laughs> so, I'm, on, I'm wrapping this package, and then I notice it's not very protected that well. You know, it's, it's not. So I reach for it, I grab the paper. And what I see, I have no respect for my parents anymore. It was a bunch of fucking dildos and anal beads, gag balls, just a bunch of nasty sex shit. And I was like, holy fuck, I hope this isn't my birthday present, because that's <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> Unless, 
maybe, I don't know yet. <laughs> but anyways, after the, that's what I told like, my friends about the traumatizing event. And we smoked a lot of weed. We went bowling, saw my pastor. And then uh, why I needed a new phone though is because every time I get a call, I have to put it on speaker because it just doesn't work. So I was checking into the front desk when my mom calls me. And before this, I told her I found her package, that shit was nasty. What the fuck? Left the family group chat, deleted, blocked, get out of here. I might live with you, don't live with me on social media, okay? But, and then um, she called me though, because you know, I respect my mom, I answer her calls, but then goes to the speaker. And everybody in that fucking bowling alley heard what my mom said. She, on speaker, said, where the fuck is my vibrator? I was planning on using it tonight, all right? <laughs> And that's how I found out my parents are fucking kinky bastards. Thank you guys.